People Rule makes no apology for occasionally taking on a subject that's delicate, sensitive and at the heart of political controversy. If it's something that bothers you, then that's where we should be. This week, one of the toughest stories we've taken on, the problem of unemployment, but as it particularly affects black youths in our community. We sent our cameras in to the black community in Southampton, and this is our report. the youths in this band are unemployed. In Southampton alone, 4.7% of the unemployed are black. The corresponding percentage of whites unemployed is 3.6%. If the figures are broken down by age, then the percentage of unemployed black youths is alarmingly high, in the region of 10%. I was born in Southampton. And how long have your family lived here? Um, I think way back in 1960s, I think, or 50s, something like that. I got seven CSEs, I think it was seven or six, um, relatively, well, low grades, but within the region of getting a job, I should think, anyway. And uh, at college, I got two A's and six O's, which were, to me, OK. How has that helped you in trying to get a job? Um, trying to get a job, not very good, because I think more or less it's my outlook that when I go for an interview, um, the appearance of my hair especially, as I am a Rastafarian. And towards, I think, the people of, well, the English people around here, I think it's something new which they haven't adapted to, so therefore I feel they're not quite up to the standards of it yet, so they're not going to employ me onto their staff or anything. They might feel that you should adapt to them. Yeah, I should feel so. That's what they think, but I don't see... I think every man has got his own differences as well as religions, so therefore I don't see why there should be that barrier. Black people have really got to achieve an academic superiority and to compete with the, the white counterparts by having sort of higher qualifications, a greater experience, because you've really got to be twice as good if you're black to get the same kind of job. Here in Hampshire, it's a bit more difficult because you've got to really try and convince the majority of employers in, in Southampton, Hampshire, and the majority of institutions that discrimination does exist, and it's a very, very difficult thing to prove. How do you try and prove it? Um, one way we try to prove it is, is by talking to employers, talking to trade unions, um, putting it to them that they don't have that many number of black people within their workforce, and then suggesting to them that, that perhaps they should go out of their way to employ certain numbers within the workforce. This is my life. Jenny Simmons went for a job as a barmaid at one of Southampton's nightclubs. When I went there, I was shown to the office and he told me what the job entailed, which was um, just sitting behind the bar and he told me what I would have had to wear, which was um, fishnet tights, a short little mini skirt, a um, little white pinniform and a leotard. While he was talking to me, he wasn't looking at my face, he kept looking at my chest. I didn't want the job. Because they only wanted me for my body. I wasn't in for that kind of thing. If I took a job like that, my parents would denounce me. And I've done um, basic office training. And I went for two interviews last week. It was at a solicitor's office, another estate agent as a junior clerk. I thought I would have gotten. I never got anything, so I don't know what I'm going to do now.
I think we are a token gesture in the sense that the government probably feel that because they've set up the Commission for Racial Equality together with the local community relations councils, they have done their bit to solving racial relations when in fact the answer really lies in putting a lot more money into the inner city areas, which isn't 100% black. I mean, a lot of white people in the inner city areas are also suffering. And I think because black people, or some black people, in fact, speaking up about some of the things which are not being done in the inner city area, I think it's going to be very good for also the white people who live in the inner city areas. And even, in fact, the Southampton City Council have not really employed, you know, sufficient number of black people considering that the majority of black people live in the inner city area where the Southampton Civic Centre and most of their facilities are. I think we're very fair in Southampton as an authority, both with uh, our labour and uh, the way we react to housing. Can you tell me how you can prove that, particularly on the labour front, on employment? For the amount of people that we employ within our authority. Um, not only at, um, how can one put it, the, uh, the bus drivers and uh, inspectors we have, we have people employed in senior positions in the Civic Centre. How many people does the authority actually employ and what percentage of that? I black? wouldn't like to go right into the figures at this moment. I am not fully aware of how many we do employ, to be quite honest with you. What about local government? How do they compare? Well, <laughs> As, to my knowledge, if I understand the Race Relation Act as it is, um, the local um, government is not acting in accordance with the Act. Um, there are various sections of it. Um, when, you, when you consider that um, local governments should be um, complying with um, central government policy, um, if that was happening, um, a lot of the problems that you have in different regions, um, you would not have. Um, let's take the buses, uh, the city transport. I mean, it's no hidden secret that there is discrimination. Um, okay, the, the council will deny it and say, oh, we have so many people employed, but talk to the people employed there privately and look at the structure, and you'll see there's um, discrimination there. It's equal opportunities wherever you go within the authority. How many members of the senior management team are black? When you say senior management team, I'm talking about probably third-tier officers at this moment in time. Obviously, people that have come into the authority in the last five, maybe ten years. Um, there's two or three. Out of a total number? Oh, senior management. I'm afraid this is another question. I haven't got the, f the figures right at my fingertips on the amount of people we employ. I've got six CSEs, three low ones and three average ones. Anything else? Uh, two seeing gills, one in electrician and one in electronics. When you've been looking for a job, have those qualifications helped you? Yes, as far as the interview, but not any further. What do you think, in your view, goes wrong after that, then? No, I ain't got no idea. I think if I quote, I think it was Aristotle who said that um, poverty and crime is the parent of revolution. And I think um, in a nutshell, um, history has shown, I mean, it is showing itself in various countries throughout the world when unemployment is allowed to reach a level which is unacceptable. I, what um, generally happens, and I don't think this country will be any exception. I mean, this is not... Um, restricted to the black community because um, it is noticeable that the black youth is very closely identified with the white youth. Um, it, it shows that the relationship and the problems um, are very closely connected and unemployment itself is not restricted to any community. It's something that goes right across the board. How would you describe the relationship between the authority and the various voluntary groups that exist within the black community? I think it varies according to the voluntary group. Um, we have our ups and downs. Uh, I appreciate this the same as one would expect with um, various ethnic groups relating to a local authority. But I think by amicable meetings and this sort of thing, then we can iron these problems out. We were under threat. Um, here recently with our grant. You had councillors who were elected to represent 
a community which has uh, a majority, the majority of black people in that um, ward. And they were, after being elected, turning to us and threatening us with grand cuts and things like that, which is contradicting the very policy which they are supposed to be implementing. Navnit Dolakia is a principal officer with the Commission for Racial Equality. I think things, things have improved in the sense that nobody 15 years ago would have believed that this country would have three race relation acts in, in, the, in the lifetime of the conservative and labor governments. And yet we have three different acts over that period of time. I believe also that it has given the minorities the right to be able to pursue their complaints, to pursue their particular grievance. And I think that in itself is a fundamental change. Previously, if you were discriminated, there was no way you could go around and, and satisfy yourself of what was being done to you. Here you've got an opportunity to be able to, uh, to take your complaint and at the end of the day let the independent tribunal decide whether you've been discriminated or not. And to my mind that is a substantial change, yes. Let me give an example. Uh, the reason why most of us travel in the train and pay our fare is because somewhere along the line the inspector is going to ask us for a bar to a ticket. And as, as far as legislation is concerned, it acts there to ma ma maintain that people have certain sort of behavior. That's the first thing. The second thing, at the end of the day also the minorities themselves will have to develop themselves with the concept of self-help so that they could eradicate the disadvantage they suffer. I think that to a large extent will go also in terms of obtaining equality. And the third thing, the bodies, the statutory bodies that have been set up time and again, I think they have a significant role to play in terms of also maintaining and, and establishing this equality. I went for this interview at this one firm I saw it in the paper and went down, phoned him up, went down, had an interview. A couple of days later they wrote me a letter, not successful, and after that I saw the same advert in the paper for the same job. And I was very disappointed when I saw it and I was needed to work. Why do you think you were turned down? I think it was a colour, because when I went there there was no black people working for them, you know, and probably they didn't want no, no black people to work for them or anything like that. We're making very slow moves to sort of convincing employers in Hampshire and Southampton that firstly that this problem exists. Um, it might take another few years to actually get them to say, well, yes, it does exist. And then it may take a few years for them to work out what are we going to do about it. But the question is, you know, is the black community prepared to wait? that length of time for us to convince these people and for them to do something about it. And, you know, nobody really can say how much patience the black community has when it comes to that. Some people could get involved in, in, act, in anti-social activities. Um, well, this has in fact happened in, in some of the bigger cities, you know, like uh, Birmingham and London. So whatever, you know, whatever the situation is, if people don't face up to the fact that Britain is a multiracial society and attempt to bring those people on the outskirts into the picture, then, you know, it looks quite a gloomy picture, not only for the black community, but for communities which exist in the inner city area. How do you feel about your own future? Um, towards my own future, uh, I don't really know, to be honest because I'm not really thinking on it. I just take every day as it comes. Um, I don't really know, to tell you the truth. It's, uh, just have to see what happens. The following firms and authorities are currently under investigation for racial discrimination by the Commission for Racial Equality. Was something for me 